Good morning, everybody. Morning, sir. Oh, that's a very tired morning. Am I, uh, is my assumption correct? You sound very tired. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I know how you feel. Um, I had my second jab on Monday, as I said. And the experience wasn't as wonderful as the first one. I've really been battling the last two days. Um, unfortunately, the majority of the classes are online. I know that we've got contact classes from tomorrow for the Bible students. Um, I'll be on campus. Um, but um, yeah, um, uh, I'm a bit tired as well. I, it's obviously for different reasons to yours. I know you guys are busy with um, uh, your workload is quite high at the moment. Lots of assignments. Um, yeah. So let me just correct something that I dropped on Monday. The class test is not for this week. Class test two is only next week. Okay. So then take that off your um, off your list. Um, but you've probably seen it. It's it's um, it's on the schedule on on Canvas. I will always remind you a day before um, a class test that that. There is a class test online, um, but it's next week. It's not this week. Don't worry. Everybody else, all good? Um, also tired? Mm, I can see you're struggling. Now, it's on days like this. When we cannot bring our A game to the party, that unfortunately in the big adult world out there where you are working, let me just get Julie's admitted as well. Um, you are going to get those days as well. Um, and especially um, when you're in sales, it's going to be tough because um, all, your, your boss is not going to say, you know what? Um, I'm so sorry that you're not feeling well today. But you know what? It doesn't mean that the sales target for the month or for the term or for the week is going to be changed. So you'll have to find creative ways of working around that. Um, fortunately, however, and as I said previously, chapter nine and chapter 10, um, where chapter nine specifically focused on key accounts and how important it is to manage and forge a very solid long-term relationship with um, those important customers, those important buyers. Um, <clears throat> it ties in quite nicely with what we um, are going to cover in chapter 10, which is basically managing our relationship with our customers. The importance of that uh, goes way back to chapter one, where we did some different marketing or business orientations, in other words, philosophies, and approaches that businesses take towards how they manage their business and their business activities. We've seen that in marketing, there's been a massive shift towards um, customer orientated or cust a more sort of customer centered philosophy. Um, Corinne, I think you mailed me um, asking a question for the assignment about uh, related to that, um, are you satisfied with with the re with the reply? Could you continue with your assignment? Was that spot on? Because it very much ties in with what we are currently saying. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, and I think the reason why, um, especially chapter nine and ten, has become um, um, a central focus of. Um, most marketing courses and modules is because there's been a shift um, in how businesses approach their marketing activities, and it's very much a customer centered approach. Um, it's the fact that the focus now lies on correctly identifying the need of the customers, and then additionally, uh, in addition to that, obviously, ensuring that we don't lose our focus or keep our um, take our eye off the prize which is to make the sale but we're going to sacrifice the sale 
in an attempt to forge a relationship that will result in future sales. So it's very much the manner in which the, the whole sale transaction is completed to ensure that the customer feels um, satisfied in the manner in which it was conducted rather than actually just um, having a very short-term focused approach of hitting, making the sale, moving on to the next one, uh, and just hitting targets all the time. You will eventually hit your targets as well. And I think um, the skeptics that initially said, yeah, you know what, once you start making the customer the, the central focus, the customer is going to, the, 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 the tail is going to wag the dog. Um, you know what, in business, that's not a bad thing. Um, obviously, within the capacity of what you can deliver, and we have said it um, earlier on in some of the previous chapters, um, you're not going to, um, you're going to bend over backwards for your customers, but you're not going to break your back. Um, it is important to, to know the boundaries within which you can or how far you can negotiate to keep the customer happy. And then sometimes, especially in this chapter, we'll be dealing with customer care. And especially sometimes if the customer, if the issue that the customer has is, is of such a trivial nature, that it's no point in engaging in an unnecessary um, debate as to um, who's right and who was right and who's wrong. And you know what, sometimes you just, whatever will make them happy, you give them because in the long run, it's actually going to be to your benefit. Right, so in chapter 10, we'll be looking at relationship selling, um, where, as I said, the focus will primarily be on how we service the customer. Um, very much, um, and, and if we go through the business philosophies that um, we did in chapter one, the production, uh, the product and the production um, orientated approaches were very much focused on the quality and specific features of a product. Uh, it had to be of the highest quality. And the opinion was, or the opinion of managers were that customers are going to select them above their competitors because of the quality of their products and the specific features that their products offer. Um, very much the core of um, the product um, orientated approach towards um, business and marketing. Now, when it actually focuses, on, and that's where the total quality management, TQ, TQM, or what the TQM referred to, the focus was totally on quality. Now, according to Peter Drucker, quite simply, there's only one real definition for business, and that is to create customers. Because without customers, you will have no business. And essentially, that was the sort of introduction to, um, for many manage, managers or many businesses on a management level when they started planning their strategies to say, well, maybe we should do a sort of a reality check here. And you know what? We are nothing without our customers. So we should actually be making our customers the central um, point of focus. Because customers determine the nature of our business, in other words, can we keep up with the innovations and the changes that happen all the time to ensure that we can still um, satisfy the customer's needs? And also, um, can we keep them happy to return? All obviously within the capacity um, for us to be able to do that. Uh, the basic focus, therefore, would obviously then be on marketing and how do we, as a business, market to our customers where we have a customer-focused approach. It's very easy to, um, to be innovative because if you listen to your customers, if you do your job correctly as a salesperson, um, through the proper questioning and determining what the needs of the customer um, are, 
um, you will get a sufficient knowledge about the customer that will allow you to produce products that will be able to be um, um, pr produced in a cost-effective manner to still accommodate the customer's needs. We're all good. This is a theme for this chapter. So if we, if you understand what what um, I've just said in the um, in the last five minutes, uh, the rest of the chapter should be fine because um, that's the foundation on which um, this chapter is built. Right, customer care. I don't know of any customer who doesn't want to feel special um, whenever they purchase um, a product. You want to feel special. Small little things. This morning, um, I dropped off my son. He got his first vaccination this morning. And um, I, I quickly popped into the pharmacy because I was getting some medication. And um, nothing dangerous pharmacy for, jeez, best part of the last five years. Um, for the first time today, when I um, got to the front, and the lady at the, at, at, at the pay point is always very friendly, um, she actually called my, my name. Now, I wasn't wearing any um, identification. I wasn't even wearing my study or mask. I was just using one of these um, run-of-the-mill surgical masks and um, not wearing any form of identification. How did you know my name? Obviously, because you realized over a period of time that I'm a regular visitor. Um, she decided that um, obviously, or no, her management or whatever have maybe decided to to maybe, um, and they can't get the, the detail obviously from, from transactions that you've done previously. Um, and I was quite impressed. And, and those are the small things. Just the fact, because she, she was wearing a name tag. Maybe it was because every single time that I, when I visited um, and I um, did a transaction with the pharmacy, I called her on a name because it was visible, um, the name tag here on her, um, on her, um, on a shirt, um, maybe that was what motivated her to say, you know what, customers know who I am because they can see my name. Maybe I should take a bit more care. Um, and that's those very, very small things that I think um, go a very long way. Um, if we take care of our customers in that manner and paying attention to that detail, then the quality of the product is not going to come into question, although it still needs to be of a, of a very um, high quality. People can be very friendly, extremely friendly, but if the product that I'm buying is not of a good quality, I'm going to go to a different place because a different place with a better quality may always also offer me um, um, the same customer service that I'm getting. Um, when it comes to the hospitality industry, um, it, it appears as if um, our president is going to talk to us very um, soon, probably even later this week, but he usually leaves his surprise for, for, for Sunday evenings. It appears that we might go down to level two, which is going to be um, a reduction in some of the restrictions, which I think is especially uh, for people in the hospitality industry, restaurants and um, and facilities who offer um, social gatherings to large groups um, is, is definitely going to benefit from it because your business hours are going to be longer um, and more people will be allowed in a particular facility. Um, and it, it's quite interesting um, that it is happening because it's extremely necessary. Now that the seasons are changing and people uh, are getting into shape um, for summer, regardless of what lies ahead if we're actually going to have open beaches this summer um, people um, are going to um, people are going to get out of the or want to get rid of the the winter blues and um, it'll it'll be good for business in general so if that happens and especially in um, in the hospitality industry um, people will go to a different business you could Put on your best smile tonight, and it can result in the greatest tip if you're a waiter or waitress in, in a restaurant. 
if the chef messed up, the customer is not going to come back. And this, we will see as the chapter progresses, is where everybody in the business needs to be on the same page. Doesn't good customer service is not just you in the front line working directly with face to face with the customer. It's everybody. It's the person picking up the phone when you're making the reservation for um, for the visit to that restaurant. It's the cleaners who made sure that um, between sittings um, the tables are cleaned and sanitized properly. That um, um, the washers, the dishwashers, in in um, making sure that everything is done properly. Um, so when the cutly crumb comes out to the table, everything is fine. The waiter and waiters working on, um, on, on that particular table. Everybody, the person at the end of the day who's going to um, um, who's going to um, conclude the transaction when you pay. Everybody, the chef, the whole lot, everybody. Um, is is part of the quality of service that needs to be delivered for us to ensure that they are there's there's sufficient care taken of our customers that will inspire them to come back. It helps you as a business, obviously, um, to build your brand. That's how big brands have been established, delivering top class service but also a high quality product. The aspects on the bottom of the screen that specifically relate to um, um, customer need identification, um, we have dealt before or have dealt with before. It is important because that's where everything starts. If you identify the needs of the customer incorrectly, what the specific requirements um, are that the customer wants. And if you go back to the initial slide, the front cover, there's at the bottom left corner, there's a link to two videos. The one specific um, one, um, or both of them are actually just a, a compilation of, of, of some funnies of good and bad customer service. And there was a specific, a specific situation where the customer um, indicated exactly what, because of his um, lactose intolerant condition, um, were not um, supposed to get as part of the meal, and that person did, um, and how it was dealt with. So um, it 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 starts with identifying by paying attention to the specific requirements of the customer. That's where the whole customer care um, and top customer service process starts. Because if you identify it correctly, the chances that you'll be delivering it correctly is also fine. Because you could be doing it in a fantastic manner, but if you don't deliver it in a manner or in, according to the specific requirements of the customer, um, you can put on your best um, um, dress and your best face and the customer's not going to be happy. You buy a vehicle, you order it a particular color, the salesperson says to you, it's going to be here in three, four days. Uh, we do have all other colors in stock, but this particular one is very popular, so there's a two-day delay. They phone you and say, so your car's are ready for collection. You're excited, you drive down to the dealership, you get there, it's the wrong color. Because the salesperson did not pay attention to um, the details. If the salesperson did, there would have been two different um, two possible solutions. Let me just get Ruan. Welcome, Ruan, House Number BM. Yeah. My apologies. I'm 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 on some form of medication. Ruan is not in Namibia, he's from Namibia, but he's in Cape Town at the moment. Yeah, and he has told me that before. My apologies. Yes. <laughs> um were you any morning run on the beach and um, run or, um, or were you just completing an assignment? Say again, sir. Did you go for any morning run on the beach? Um, thanks for joining us. Um, or were you, like everybody else, working on assignments? Assignments, sir. <laughs> 
Um, I feel for all of you. Might not appear like that all the time, but I do. Um, but yes, in a situation like, like I was busy discussing, if the vehicle arrived, the salesperson, before he phones the customer, to inform them that their vehicle that they've ordered has arrived. Check and see if it is the correct color as it was um, ordered by the customer. Before phoning the customer, because it's better in a case like this to, if there was a mistake with the color of the vehicle, to phone the customer after you've corrected it. Found out, find out first where the problem was, who misinterpreted your um, um, specific re request, um, fix it, find out when the new vehicle will be there, then phone the customer and say, sir, you know what, I said two days, I'm very sorry, there's been a slight problem, the car will not be here today, but it will be here tomorrow, but then it will be the correct one that's here tomorrow. Yeah, so there's different ways, and just an explanation of if we make the mistake by identifying the specific requirements of the customer at the beginning, doesn't matter how um, many excuses we offer, doesn't matter how many extras we offer um, to keep the customer happy, what biggest smile we put on, the customer's not going to be happy because that's not what they ordered. Okay, um, very important to ensure that this happens is that from um, a business point of view, you need to ensure that you properly educate your um, your employees on what good and bad customer service is. Good customer service is not just to give the customer what they've actually ordered at the time, um, delivered on the time that they've ordered, and uh, done in a friendly manner. They are way more than, than that. And actually, uh, that's also not where the process stops. Training them, training them, and make sure that they are upskilled in the in techniques that's necessary to ensure that they um, can live up to the promise that you have made as a, as a company. We're all good, everybody's still fine at the moment? We'll do a short break in, um, um, we'll, we'll take a short break in a, in, in a while. Um, as I said, with my, with side effects and the severity of the side effects that I've experienced since um, second vaccination, um, I need to manage my uh, levels of, in, of energy as well and concentration. Um, but this, um, as we said originally, stick to the, the, um, the scheduled times because there might be people who have clashes with classes and they might join us at the time that um, the second session starts, although we do have a double period. Um, at this point, while, we, while we're chatting about this, um, let me interrupt myself. Um, from this week, you are aware that from this week, you actually can come into campus and then there will be contact sessions. There will be um, in the classrooms as is on your timetable. There will be a lecture in front of the classroom and you're more than welcome for that face-to-face -face session. Is there anybody um, that, um, do you plan on doing that? Um, would your time allow it for this week? Um, or are you going to continue with your online sessions rather and focus on completing your assignments? Or would you be coming into campus? Or have you been coming into campus? Because obviously my module is not the only module that you attend at the moment. Jessica is going online. Jessica is not coming. I'm obviously referring to the, 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 the students who are in, um, on the Belleville campus, obviously Centurion students. Uh, your campus sessions, um, I'm not sure if you do you actually go into the campus or you, you have that option of going into the campus. And then somebody would actually um, access uh, computers for you, um, or would you rather stay at home, your the, the Centurion students? Belleville students, anybody um, who's on campus at the moment, or has been this week? No, sir. Mostly playing the home game. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I understand that it's probably um, related to your workload. Right. Um, let's continue. 
the diagram that you see on the page, let me quickly get my edition 11. I forgot to make that change. Um, that particular table 10.1, you'll find is obviously uh, not on page, um, <clears throat> apologies. That is, and I'll make the change to the, um, to the PowerPoint and I'll upload the new latest PowerPoint. Um, or slides um, when I make the changes. Table 10.1 on page 295 is in the 10th edition. For the 11th edition, you'll find it at the top of page 261. Right. Now, um, traditionally, or traditional marketing, um, if we contrast or compare that to relationship marketing, because this is what this chapter is about, relationship marketing, relationship selling, um, let's just look at um, some of those highlighted points. For traditional marketing, the focus was on the single sale. You go in, you hit the target, make the sale, okay, next one. Um, it's almost like a conveyor belt. And believe me, customers pick up on that very quickly. Um, relationship marketing, definitely more customer-centered. Um, um, okay, we're looking at keeping the customer happy. If you don't make the sale, at least the customer leaves happy and there's a chance that they will come, or very good chance that they'll come back. Traditional marketing, the orientation was very much on the product features and the product quality. Um, relationship marketing, the focus is on the benefits that that product will offer the customer. Complete different approach. Trans <coughs> Transaction marketing or traditional marketing, very much um, short time um, scale based. Um, the tie-in of um, with the first point, focusing on a single sale, as opposed to establishing a more sort of a long-term relationship with your customer um, when it comes to relationship marketing. Um, transactional marketing, very little emphasis on customer service. That's the priority for relationship marketing. Um, transactional marketing, very limited customer commitment. Yeah, it's very, very high. The customer is not going to, um, is not necessarily going to become loyal to the brand, to the brand if, and actually it was proven in the study um, in the, um, in the vehicle industry, 40% of customers who have bought a vehicle from a particular branded dealership, when they three, four years later um, upgrade or change, when they sell or trade that vehicle, it's not with the same brand and dealership. So they're not that brand loyal. If a typical trend, a traditional transaction marketing approach was taken because they didn't they, they got good service but service wasn't good enough and thorough enough maybe something happened in between the sale um, and your next sale when you went in to um, have your vehicle serviced because remember as long as you're still the owner of that vehicle you as um, the seller who originally sold that vehicle to the customer, you are still managing that relationship with the customer. You're ensuring that the database is updated and that they are getting a regular um, SMSs to say, your vehicle, if you were doing uh, the average kilometers per, um, per month, should be almost ready for its 50,000 or its 60,000 kilometer service. Um, and then obviously checking on those and the actual service itself, um, ensuring that that is done, um, that that whole experience is a good one. It's not just dropping off the vehicle, it's the, um, the whole process. Was it was the process efficient? That all impacts on, on the customer returning or not. Um, you'll find that the businesses where um, working on focusing on the relationship that's established with the customer is a priority. The customers are more committed to return and continue supporting that brand. 
Right. For relationship marketing, quality is not um, the biggest concern. It's quality of the entire experience, not just <coughs> um, primarily quality of the product. Like point two on the transactional marketing indicate, we, we focus on product features and qualities. Relationship marketing is the quality of everything, the quality of the sale, the quality of the product, the quality of the service, everything collectively. Right, that particular diagram, I think um, I've got something open on another screen. I'm also going to just change that for um, the Lems edition that's also on the, that's on the bottom of page 261. Um, if you look at transaction and relationship marketing um, and uh, the different strategies, I'm just going to highlight some of them that I think is more appropriate than others. Um, will I, um, and my apologies, you don't have it on the screen yet. There we go. Um, will I ask you for a diagram like this and, and to make a comparison um, as to what the, the marketing strategy con um, continuum is all about by specifically contrasting transactional and relationship marketing? No, I won't do that. Uh, it's important, however, to at least know, I think, three points on each. Um, and if you know the one, the other one, uh, if you know the transactional one, the relationship one is exactly the opposite of that um, almost, uh, as you can see right at the top. Um, the time perspective for transactional um, um, marketing strategy is very short-term focused and for relationship is long-term focused. So it's, it's very much um, contrasting each other because um, that's how far we have come in, in relationship marketing um, or in managing our relationship with our customers from the days that um, it was just product and production um, focused. Um, let me see this. Let's look at number three, the price elasticity. In transactional um, um, marketing strategy, the customers tend to be more sensitive to the price uh, because they know it's sort of, um, they are not, they're getting sufficient service, but they are not, um, the, the, the needs and requirements of the customer is important, but it's not the priority for the business. They're trying to make a sale. So they often rush through the whole process um, and it's done in the quickest, most time efficient way and manner. Um, it means that the customer is not that price sensitive because the customer will will um, will go to another supplier if um, he or she is not happy. Um, with the relationship marketing, customers tend to be less sensitive to price because they value the experience that they are getting, the manner in which the transaction is being conducted, the fact that they think, you know what, um, I'm I actually. I've, I've just bought this vehicle, but um, I can see myself coming back to these people whenever I have to replace my vehicle or whenever I have to buy another vehicle or whenever I have to buy a vehicle for my one of my children or for or even refer somebody because of um, um, because of the experience that I am getting. And therefore, price is not um, they are not that price sensitive. Um, they are very much. Um, they're not going to. They're not going to walk out of a transaction purely for um, for the price of the item because they see the value in their entire experience. Total quality management. Total quality management. <clears throat> My apologies. It is for any business with the level of competition that there is in all industries. Um, it's become very, very difficult for you to keep your market share. 
um, for you to just produce a better quality product, you're not going to necessarily um, win the customer's trust and um, the customer's loyalty purely based on that. So by just applying the four Ps of the marketing mix, you're going to make the transaction, but you're not going to uh, be guaranteed any sustainable business from that particular customer. We're looking at, um, if we can refer back to marketing one in your first year, the different levels, uh, different product levels, uh, that augmented level that refers to specifically all those almost, um, yeah, non-physical is the correct word, um, guarantees and special features that they offer um, when you drop, um, drop your vehicle off for service, um, that shuttle services offer to take you back home or take you to your work, uh, collecting you in the afternoon again when the car is ready. Um, all these kind of um, non-physical services that's offered um, becomes very, very important for you to keep that competitive um, advantage in, in a very competitive market. And it's, it's the same everywhere, people. Think about it. Restaurants, hotels, airlines, vehicle dealerships, almost anything in life. People nowadays, because um, money's tight, because the economy is, is battling globally, people want quality. People are prepared to pay for something that is of a good quality because they know they can keep it much longer. They don't have to replace it regularly, um, especially when it comes to durable products. Um, and the value, because the exchange what they have in the form of money and what you have in the form of a product, that exchange must, in the opinion of the customer, be one that um, rates as valuable. If they see value in it, they will go a long way in ensuring that they get that product. So we focus <clears throat> on not just the quality of the, um, of the product, but we focus on the quality experience that we offer our customer. When businesses enter different, and um, I know that the slide refers to, to um, international or global um, interact, um, transactions, but it's not just limited to businesses um, abroad, uh, it's also within your own um, country, different provinces. The experience you will have at a pick and pay in Cryfontaine and a pick and pay in um, um, in, in um, Amanzam Toti and a pick and pay in Summer Strand in Port Elizabeth, Quebec, um, those are um, they're all going to be different. They're the same company but it's different management and different staff. Uh, and it's, it becomes very difficult because people tend to compare and they very easily compare and quickly compare. I know, I mean, when I came back after just two weeks in the U, uh, United States a couple of years ago, um, immediately I was used to a higher quality um, of service and a greater efficiency in, in how service is offered to you and that became my new that became my new um, standard. I was expecting that, and we have to realize that people are not obviously in the last two years they've been limited, and I believe from this morning, or well, not from this morning, but from next week. Uh, but it was announced this morning that Canada is the next country that have opened their borders for us. You can travel there if you've been fully vaccinated um, and you have a visa to go. But um, because people have before the pandemic. Um, traveled uh, extensively globally for business, for holidays, whatever. The service that they are exposed to um, is is obviously of a different standard than they used to back in their home country. Uh, it's important for business to pick up on that because and, and realize that customers travel globally and that you do not set your standards on service delivery um, based on being the best in Cape Town or the best in the Western Cape or the best in South Africa, because people don't 
just travel within their own country. They're exposed to different levels of service globally, and that should um, alert you um, as to what level of service you have to offer to ensure that you um, keep that customer happy and convert them to become loyal. People, um, you've been great so far. I'm going to take a break. Um, I need to, my nose is blocking up again, so I need to um, um, do the necessary. I'm also going to make a cup of tea. So we'll um, complete the session now. Let's resume in, in, in five minutes, um, and then we um, take it from there. Um, take a break, um, and I will chat again shortly. I'll stay online, so if there's anybody that wants to ask questions, um, type it in the, in the meeting chat for me. I'll respond to it um, verbally or by replying to your text um, message um, when I return. Um, but I'm just going to quickly make a cup of tea. I'll see you in a short while. <laughs> 